Hello and welcome to the Daily English News Program in Azerbaijan Television with the most important events of the day. I'm your host, Elie Sindi. A groundbreaking ceremony was held at the Gulistan Palace in Baku for the 1,280 megawatt thermal power plant, the largest in Azerbaijan's independence period. President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, attended the event. Azerbaijan Republic of President Janab Ilham Aliyev. Noting that this is a very significant event and it will greatly strengthen the energy potential of our country and at the same time further increase the importance of Mingachevir as the electricity generation center of Azerbaijan, the head of state went on to say that Mingachevir is currently our main city in the field of electric energy. The reconstruction of the Mingachevir power station was one of the priority issues, and the process of complete overhaul of the station began on my instruction in 2018, said President Ilham Aliyev, and added that in a short period of time, in a matter of two years, eight blocks were completely reconstructed and put into use. Thus, in 2020, the station started working again with its original generating capacity of 2,400 megawatts. I should also note that as a result of the restoration and reconstruction work, more than 600 megawatts of lost power was restored, which in itself is a tantamount to the construction of a new large station. Now begins a new era of the city of Mingachevir as the electricity center of Azerbaijan. In fact, not only Azerbaijan, but also the entire Caucasus. The station, with a capacity of about 1,300 megawatts, will certainly strengthen our potential to a great extent. This will be another contribution to Azerbaijan's energy security. Hundreds of new jobs will be created and thus Azerbaijan will make full use of its capabilities to meet both domestic demand and at the same time take greater steps in the field of electric power and natural gas. Because the consumption of conventional fuel in the newly built station is quite low and this will enable our country to save approximately 800 million cubic meters or 1 billion cubic meters of gas per year, said President Ilham Aliyev. The head of state also noted that this new station, meeting modern standards, will consume significant less carbon dioxide by 2 million tons and thus it will be of great benefit to the environment. Saying that station will be built using the domestic resources of Azerbaijan, the head of state added that the total cost of the plant will be about $400 million and people familiar with the field of electricity generation know how much a plant with a capacity of about 1,300 megawatts can cost. Noting that the station will be built together with foreign partners and Minister of Enterprises and Made in Italy attended the ceremony, the head of state went on to say that a Chinese company will participate in the construction of the station. Today we are laying the foundation of a really large and important project. I am sure that the station will be built on time and will strengthen the energy potential of our country, enhance our export opportunities and open the way for new future projects with foreign partners, said President Ilham Aliyev. Other speakers at the event included Minister of Enterprises and Made in Italy of the Italian Republic, Adolfo Urso, CEO of Ansalda Energia, Giuseppe Marino, and CEO of the Chinese Dongfang Company, Chen Huaji. A video about the thermal power plant was shown at the ceremony. President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, a minister of enterprises and made in Italy of the Italian Republic, Adolfo Urso, laid the foundation of the plant.
President Hamaliyev received a delegation led by Minister of Enterprises and Made in Italy of the Italian Republic, Adolfo Urso, who attended a groundbreaking ceremony for a 1,280 megawatt thermal power plant, the largest in Azerbaijan's independence period. President El Hemeli welcomed Minister Adolf Urs and stressed the significance of the event and the project that will greatly strengthen Italian Azerbaijani friendship. The Italian Azerbaijani relations have a strategic importance, and the bilateral political relations are at the very high level. President Mattarella's visit to Azerbaijan and visits of the head of our state to Italy have strengthened these relations even more. Our strong political ties are a great foundation. Oil and gas and now power and engineering projects have greatly strengthened this foundation. He noted that the process of building the Italy Azerbaijan University is going fast. Five Italian universities are already partners with us. At the same time, the company is doing most of the work in the liberated lands, represent Turkey and Italy at the head of our state. The Italian Azerbaijani relations are so deep and sincere that the most important projects were entrusted to Italian companies. In Baku, in many liberated cities, a victory and occupation museums are being created by Italian companies. In Shusha, the cultural capital of Azerbaijan, street of street mosques and one new mosque are being restored and built by Italian companies. At the same time, there will be new symbols that reflect our victory. A month after the second Karabakh war, a very important contract was signed between Azer Energy and Ansaldo. Lands liberated from occupation cover an area of 10,000 square kilometers. Everything is destroyed there, so we are rebuilding everything and we want more Italian companies to participate in these works. The Italian company Iveco has already started establishing its own enterprise there. Therefore, the agenda is very extensive, emphasized President Ilhamani. Minister Adolf Urst expressed gratitude for the reception and said he visited Azerbaijan many times as well as after liberation of our territories. I visited your country as part of the Italian parliamentary delegation. We visited those places at that time. I remember going to the city of Ardam and taking pictures from the minaret of the mosque. I showed them to Italian news channels. This trip gave me great feelings. No one could even imagine the level of a devastation, stress Adolfo Urso. At the meeting, the sites emphasized the importance of the activity of the Intergovernmental Commission of holding a meeting of this commission as soon as possible in terms of the implementation of the task set. During the conversation, the parties exchanged fees on cooperation in renewable energy, agricultural and machinery, pharmaceutical industry, science, education, culture, and other fields, as well as restoration and construction work in liberated territories. The importance of the TAP project, which currently plays an important part in ensuring Italy's energy security, was also discussed, along with the issues of increasing its transmission capacity in the future. Italy's support for the development of Azerbaijan's relations with the European Union was highly appreciated, and it was emphasized that Italy was an important partner for Azerbaijan among European Union countries. Instructions were given to exchange with it at the level of relevant ministries for the implementation of the issues discussed. February 13th was the eighth day of the disaster of the century in Turkey. Search and rescue operations continue. Despite the fact that more than 180 hours have passed since the earthquake, there are still miracles. There are also new arrests in connection to the defects in the construction of buildings. <laughs> According to the latest reports, the number of casualties as a result of the quake exceeded 31,000. There is still hope for survivors under the rubble. A 26-year-old girl was rescued in Hatay after 177 hours. And in Adyaman, a 6-year-old child was pulled out alive from the rubble after 178 hours. Research and rescue operations have been temporarily suspended at the wreck site in Hatay. This is due to the possibility of collapse of the damaged building located next to that building. Meanwhile, the runway of Hatay airport, which was destroyed during the earthquake, was restored. For the first time since the earthquake, a plane belonging to Pegasus Airlines have evacuated 90 residents from the disaster zone to Istanbul. In addition, Turkish Minister of Defense Ulus Akar and Minister of Environment and Urban Planning Murat Kurum got acquainted with the rescue work in Hatay. <laughs> Chairman of the Grand National Assembly of Turkey, Mustafa Shanto, met with families affected by the earthquake in Kilish and Gaziantep. 
Investigations into those who caused the tragedy by making mistakes in the construction are also underway. Shukri Shitman, the engineer of the building that caused the collapse of six multi-story buildings in Adiaman and the death of 123 people, was detained in Mersin. In Gaziantep, the construction supervisor Nazmi Tosun, who was accused of the collapse of the residential complex, was detained by the police at his house in Umrania. In total, 114 engineers were involved in the investigation. The rescue forces of the Azerbaijan Emergency Situations Ministry are continuing search and rescue operations and eliminate the consequences of the strong earthquake non-stop in fraternal Turkey. As a result of the search and rescue operations carried out by a rescuers in Kahraman Maras region, which was seriously damaged as a result of the earthquake, 51 people were rescued alive and the bodies of 613 people were taken out and handed over to the authorities. Six families of 22 people brought to Azerbaijan from the quake hit areas in Turkey were placed in a medical facility for examination and treatment. Ten of them are children. After the examinations, our compatriots affected by the earthquake will be placed in the shelter under the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection of the Population. Chair of Milimetri Saiba Gafarova made an official visit to Russia. According to the information of the special correspondent of Azerbaijan television to Russia, the delegation led by the speaker laid flowers on the grave of the unknown soldier near Kremlin. As part of her visit to Moscow, Saiba Gafarova met with chairman of the State Duma, Vyacheslav Valodin. A meeting between chair of Milimetri and chairman of the Federation Council, Valentina Matvienko, is also envisaged. You can get in touch with us by contacting us the Vehabar's hotline number 051-511-1956, through which you can report events you encountered, as well as share your suggestions and remarks. You can also contact us via our WhatsApp and Telegram accounts. That was all for today. Thank you for being with us and see you next time.